Well, welcome to this edition of the Model 3 Owners Clip Show. My name is Kenneth Bacor. And I'm Trevor Page. And as you can see, we are here on site at the 2018 Toronto International Auto Show. And we're filming right here by the Tesla booth. And they have a brand new Model X, a Model S, and wouldn't you know it, a brand new Model 3 on display. The show runs from uh, February 16th to the 25th. So within the area, come on down, check it out. I uh, just want to put it out there that they've told us that the Model 3 is going to be locked. Mm -hmm. So you will not be able to get in the car, but you can come in and see it and touch it. It will not be roped off. So yeah. there you go. Get a good idea of the size and everything else you want to know about it exactly. that you can see so from the outside. First time in Canada. So come on, check it out. Come on down for sure. All right. So what do we have on uh, on the well, plate today? Today's Ken? show, as you said, we're here at the Canadian International Auto Show in Toronto. We're going to focus on what's new from an EV perspective. But we want to start the show just specifically with some Tesla, 3, Tesla Model 3 updates, of course. And, you know, it's all about the last quarterly call that just occurred a little while ago. Um, January sales for the Tesla Model 3 were 1,875 ish around that. That's the number that I heard. So that puts a total uh, year to date, I guess, since the launch uh, of around just under 4,000 vehicles, I believe, that actually have been delivered. I don't know how many were in transit from the call. I don't believe they said that number. Uh, if they did, it was a little, I didn't hear it. Um, but definitely the focus of the last call was the continued numbers for ramp up. Um, obviously, the original 5,000 per week was pushed to the end of uh, Q2 mm -hmm. um, of this year. Um, that is now uh, is staying to the end of Q2, and they're forecasting that they hope to hit 2,500 by the end of this quarter, which will be end of March of 2018. Part of the delays for the, the ramp up, it's, it's not going as linear as we'd like it to see, is still, I think, part of it is the battery production. Yes, and uh, there's some talk about them um, bringing in uh, some capacity from Germany. Maybe you can talk, explain that to our viewers. Well, so what they've done here is at the battery factory, of course, where their bottlenecks were, uh, they put more manpower onto the situation. Now, the current production line, as they've told us, will get them to the 2,500 per yes. week production. But the new production line that is actually working in Germany, and they have to disassemble it and bring it here, and they said it was supposed to be here sometime in March, uh, will get them to the 5,000 a week. So they wanted to make that clarification so everybody understood that that was what was going on. So for all of us, I mean, it's a little bit of a delay. In Canada, it looks like it's been pushed up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So now from late 2018, yep. now we're looking at mid-2018, at least for first production. Uh, the all-wheel drive version has been pushed up a little bit too, but the base battery is still showing as early uh, 2019. Yeah, it's a little sad for a lot of people, but we are getting another some more reports now that the uh, more configuration emails are coming out. Still for current owners only, yes. uh, but it looks like uh, people that have just reserved Model S or Model X or bought, are getting configuration emails almost immediately for the Model 3. So it looks like they may be getting towards the tail end of uh, some of the early adopters for getting the car. So hopefully, keep our fingers crossed, that for the general public that the uh, configuration emails should be going out fairly soon. For what we've told on those configuration emails for Canada specifically, they should start going out in the early part of the second half of this year. So if I were to put a time frame, I would say you're probably safe to start seeing those August, September-ish from a going out and then the lead times uh, once you get your configuration email we're hearing four to six weeks yeah the yeah. fact that they actually have one here on display uh, leads me to that they feel confident that they're going to be able to get those numbers ramped up so that they can actually start the deliveries in Canada. So that's yeah. uh, good news. I'm looking yeah, I mean, that. the only the only thing that we heard from that call um, was Elon making a statement, I think, about that they're targeting weekly production of 2,500, but then he mentioned something about 2,000 as well. So again, they're, they're trying they're to get close. to that 2,500 by the end of March of this year. Mm -hmm. um, the last time we, we heard they were close to 1,000 at the beginning of this year, so they're in that stretch right now. And as we get more uh, information on the targets, we'll, uh, we'll let you know. What else is on Model 3 news? Um, well, certainly voice commands. Uh, Elon did a tweet about voice commands that you'll be able to do a lot of stuff with the car. What does that mean for the average uh, owner? What are they gonna be well, able to do with this? I think I've said this many times before on the show that Tesla needs to spend some more time on building more voice commands in their vehicles because, uh, you know, let's face it, legislation's in place pretty much everywhere. Yep. Now you can't use your cell phone in a car. So I'm kind of extrapolating here. In the future, we can probably see the fact that legislation may come down and say, that's it, no more buttons in the car. Well, at least with the Model 3, they're kind of ready because there are no buttons, really. Exactly. Uh, so putting more emphasis on voice controls is, is actually good. Uh, given the fact that we have a center screen on the car yeah. and not as many physical buttons, that you need a little bit more than just the reach because some people feel that it's unsafe. And in yeah. some circumstances, yeah. I would tend to agree. The mm -hmm. fact that you have to adjust uh, autopilot distance or traffic or cruise control by pressing a button on the screen, to me, yeah, I, I kind of agree with you. I'm with a, on mm -hmm. that. So, yeah. yeah, voice controls, more features would be good. And uh, hopefully they can spread that to the rest of the cars, too. Yeah.
And another good news that came out about the official MPGE, that's uh, the rating for electric vehicles as far as um, the economy, I guess, from that perspective, that Tesla's uh, Model 3 score was uh, improved to 130, to a combined score of 130 MPGE. So uh, as we kind of predicted, right, or especially yourself, Trev, right from the start, uh, you knew that they were a little conservative in the range numbers and that we're starting to see more real life um, being backed up by official testing. Yeah, and don't forget, we haven't seen all-wheel drive yet. And we know from the Model S and the Model X, with all-wheel drive, you get at about an extra 5% out of the deal. Mm -hmm. So uh, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll get those numbers fairly soon, hopefully yep. by the end of the year. Yep. Uh, those numbers will be revised again for the all-wheel drive, so it's good news. And, of course, we all know that you love the white interior, oh, right? Yes. There's no, uh, you've said that many times, and it's a beautiful <laughs> color, and I think there's one here. Yeah, yes, Model uh, for a Model a X is a white here. But there also, a Model 3 uh, recently was spotted with a, mighty, a white interior, and I thought we saw one earlier last, or later last year, too, that was there, out and about. There, there so, was, yeah. So there's definitely, looks like that's going to be within the option list at some point in time. We, we don't know the timing, but uh, yeah, it'll be there. Yeah, we don't know the timing yet, but it's, it's encouraging that it is... Uh, uh, it's on the plate. I mean, you know, they've, they've had it on the website that it's definitely coming. And I think it's going to tie in with the all-wheel drive availability. So it uh, shouldn't be too much longer for this option for those of you that are waiting. Well, that's really it for what we had for Model 3 updates. We kind of wanted to keep the focus short from that perspective because we do want to do uh, some interviews and scope out what's here at the Canadian International Auto Show for this year. We're going to see lots and we're going to bring it all to you guys. Well, here we are at the Canadian International Auto Show, and I'm with Francois. He's the Chief Marketing Officer for Nissan Canada. And are you specifically for the LEAF platform, or are there other platforms that you nope. manage as well? No, only the LEAF. Only the LEAF. So everything I'm you want to know about the LEAF in five minutes, we're going to tell you today. So, Francois, we've been talking a little bit before we started filming, and this is an exciting car. Absolutely. Um, but, you know, a lot of people have been waiting for the refresh of the LEAF. It's been one of the most successful electric vehicles on the planet from a sales perspective. I think. 300,000-ish uh, have been sold yep, worldwide on the yep. platform. So we saw, you know, this has been launched in Tokyo. We've seen some European footage stuff. Now it's finally coming to Canada. I think dealers are starting to receive these uh, this month in showrooms and orders are being placed or pre-orders. But we, I'd love you for you to tell our viewers what's exciting about this new Leaf. We, we did a lot of modification in terms of design, mm -hmm. technology, and power and range. Okay. So the, yep. everything changed with the with this new model. So first of all, if you look at the uh, at the actual uh, uh, design, uh, the car now looks um, like. Our cars, yeah, yeah, our yeah. Nissan yeah. design. That's you got right. the V-Motion grille at the that, front, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, floating roof like we see uh, on the Murano. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so yeah, and the see. boomerang uh, uh, tail lights and boomerang LEDs. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you can really see uh, now the Nissan DNA. Mm -hmm. On the inside, you'll see uh, the blue stitching mm -hmm. uh, on the steering yeah, wheel and on, on on the seats. So yeah. a nice little touch. Again, subtle. It doesn't scream out, but it's really subtle and actually right. accents the car. It makes it even more yeah. luxurious on the inside. That's right. And the shifter is actually has the blue blue tint and the. Mm -hmm. Push start is usually on our Nissan a uh, orange push start uh, button. Right, that's right. Uh, now it, it's it's blue on the leaf so specifically. Blue. Tell yes. us about the the car itself as far as the the tech features because you know there's a lot of tech people looking at these things, um, and I know that you've come out with Pro Pilot. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so Pro Pilot is an exciting feature, especially when we're, we're with the 401 here. Yes. Right? So and the 410 and the yeah. the 440. For, for our there's Canadian <laughs> viewers, you'll under, in Ontario, you'll understand what we're talking about. Yeah. yeah so uh, again, it, it reads. Uh, it, it is a hands-on. Uh, uh, feature yep. that really uh, integrates the intelligent cruise control and the lane assist. Yes. Uh, keeps the car in the middle of the lane mm -hmm. and also follows the car in front. Right. Simple in terms of functionality, yep. but yep. in terms of uh, technology, there's a lot into it. And yeah, and you have to touch great. the wheel. It, it's always reminding exactly. you about that. There's it's a it's, it's a not a full autonomy vehicle. It's not meant to be, in my understanding. No, exactly. It's a driver assist, and I think viewers need to understand yeah, the differences. So you're not trying to compete with Tesla's Autopilot or some of nope. the other platforms that are out there. We're introducing our first level of mm -hmm. uh, autonomous uh, yes. driving, and yes. it's, uh, it's a nice introduction to it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one uh, uh, one big feature that we have on the Leaf is the uh, e-pedal. Yes. It's a true yeah. e-pedal, yep. so you can really uh, truly drive, accelerate, decelerate, and hold the yeah. car. And I think that's completely. a differentiator because so, we know exactly. that the Bolt and the i3 have some e-pedalish uh, yep. uh, features. Trev and I last year at the show we, we test drove a, uh, a Bolt and we were doing e-pedal around the block. But I think the differentiator is that hold. That I think it's up to 30 degrees uh, up or down slope that that it will hold at is the that? end to mm -hmm. hold. Yep. It's going to use seamlessly like, yep. without you feeling it. Mm -hmm. The brakes to hold the car, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and you're never touching the brake. So I, right. you could truly drive the car at 90% plus yeah. without touching the brake yeah. in the city. Obviously the range, right? You got yep. 40. 
40% more range. Uh, so you got an NRCAN range, yeah. which is EPA yep. um, uh, average range of 242. So 242 kilometers. Yeah, And correct. miles, kilometers. 150 miles. I 151. Think, right? 151 <laughs> to miles. Be exact. Exactly. Don't lose that one. And that's in a 40 kilowatt yeah. hour battery pack. Right? Yes, yes. That, that is correct. Excellent. Okay, yeah. great. And all our cars uh, in Canada uh, will come with a battery heater. Yep. Right? Oh, they so come with a battery heater. Okay. Yes. Good to know. Yeah. Excellent. So, and it comes standard as well with quick charge. Yes. So there's a lot of standard features yeah. that we have in our car that is not initially the same with other cars from uh, other leaves from other countries that was a great overview you know, we're going to take some more b-roll so we can show uh, some more detail of the car and we'll put that on there but thank you very much it's a pleasure we wish all the best for nissan uh, in canada and worldwide and, great well uh, thank you we hope to come back and be able to uh, give a more comprehensive road review of the car at some point in time so welcome no, that sure. opportunity thank you thank you all right cheers well, we're here still at the Canadian International Auto Show, and we're here with Laura, who's one of the co-chairs for the Electric Vehicle Society in Ontario. Welcome, Laura. How are you? Thank you. I'm great. Good. It's well, good thanks for here. thanks for stopping to chat with us. Uh, what I thought I wanted to do is just get some of our viewers. We have a lot of viewers that are in Ontario and in Canada as well. Uh, just to let them know about what you guys do, what you guys are all about, because it's something that I just recently stumbled across. So maybe you could tell our viewers a little bit about the Electric Vehicle Society. Sure. So we are a uh, provincial group that um, is comprised of EV owners and enthusiasts. We come from all across the province, as far as Ottawa, Sudbury, Windsor, um, and we're really focused on educating the public on the benefits of EVs, also helping shape some of the provincial and municipal uh, policies around, um, for example, EV charging mm -hmm. in multi-tenant yeah. settings like condominiums. Like, how do you charge your car in a condo? Very hot topic. We get a lot of emails on that. What's comprised of your membership? I know you have a small membership fee, but what's the type of people that are involved in this? Mostly EV owners and enthusiasts, yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, all ages, mm -hmm. and we welcome all types of like it doesn't matter what kind of car you drive, yep. as long as it's an EV. I think you have uh, monthly meetings and, and, and public outreach sessions as yep. well that you do yeah, events? Yeah, so monthly meetings. Um, we have a monthly meeting with the EV Society of Ontario, but yep. also the regional chapters have okay. some of their own meetings um, yep. in different parts of the province. And um, we come to a lot of the ride and drives that are um, right. organized mm -hmm. either by us or by Plug and Drive, which is an EV advocacy group. Right. So we yep. do, we have a, it's a new chapter that just formed up there in Sudbury, Excellent. which is awesome. Good. So if you're interested in finding out more about the Electric Vehicle Society, just Google that and it'll pop up. If you're interested in joining, there's ways to do that or starting your own chapter. You can reach out to them through Laura and get information on doing that. And if you're down at the Canadian International Auto Show this week, uh, running here in Toronto, please stop by their booth in the EV uh, Evolution area of the South Building. And on the last day, on the Sunday, I'll be here manning the booth as well. So if you're interested in coming down to say hi, I'd love to see you. Come on down. And thanks, Laura, for your time. Appreciate no it. Hey folks, Trevor here. It's my turn to do an interview and I'm here with LA and he's the manager in product planning here at Jaguar Land Rover Canada. And look what we have behind us. We have the iPACE concept. Now, if you've been following, Ken and I have been talking about this car on the show for some time because we're following it quite closely. And LA is going to help us out with some of the technical details. So first of all, everybody wants to know, when is this coming to market? Um, we're scheduled for a in-dealer arrival this summer. So this is a dual motor car. Is it only available dual motor or is it going to be yes, single? Yes, correct. Dual motor. Uh, front and rear axles. Okay. Um, we're doing permanent magnet motors. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure as everyone probably your, uh, on your channel knows, we're looking at a 90 kilowatt hour battery mm -hmm. as well as aiming for a range of in excess of 380 kilometers. And that's uh, North American EPA, not that crazy NEDC Cor thing. Correct. Right? <laughs> that 380 kilometers will be EPA. Right. And uh, we were talking a little bit earlier before and you were telling me that you're using prismatic or pouch cells in this. Correct. But active thermal management control. That so, is correct, yes. So this, there's some good technology here, folks. Uh, behind this. So what can you tell us about cargo space on the iPACE in terms of what's available and what it's kind of, what it, what is its market, what's it, what's it targeted for? No, absolutely. Um, I'm sure as many of the EV owners know, one of the beautiful things about an electric vehicle is packaging benefits. Yeah. Um, due to this, we've been able to do a nice, low, flat load space floor and turn actually lets you have a little bit more uh, interior room in the vehicle. So what you're looking at is a package that's slightly smaller uh, in overall exterior dimensions and an F-Pace, but is actually very, very similar uh, interior-wise. 
So you were also telling me that this car is going to have a front trunk, is that right? That is correct. There will be a front storage area available in this vehicle. Okay, and the rear of the vehicle, what can you tell us about the rear seats? Is it 60-40 or 40-40? Um, we will have folding rear seats, yeah. which I know is probably a big thing for a lot of EV customers. Mm -hmm. um, one of the benefits of using a built-up from the ground platform is that there are no batteries hidden in, you know, maybe let's say traditional places, whereas if you're reusing a platform, so you will have foldable seats in this to increase your cargo room as you see fit. Can you also tell us uh, a little bit about the roof situation because here on this concept we see a little bit of a pattern in the car and I'll put some uh, pictures up so you can see what we're talking about but you mentioned something about some thermal management or some yes. coatings, right? So what we'll uh, be debuting on this vehicle is a low E coating that is actually more effective than a traditional blind. Oh, very good. So people don't have to worry about any um, you know, thermal management inside of the vehicle. Because as we know, it can get quite hot in there and using the air conditioning obviously can pull from your range. So that was definitely one of the important features on this. And I know you mentioned you'll cut up to a close-up of this. And on this concept, what you see is that's actually the Jaguar lozenge seam that you can find in multiple other areas oh, of the vehicle. Oh, nice, so nice. If you look Attention into to detail. And things of that sort, you'll see that there as well. Uh, Elaine, what can you tell our viewers about connectivity on this car? What kind of things can they maybe expect? Um, at this point, what we can say is you're going to expect the full suite of connectivity that you find in all other Jaguar Land Rover vehicles. Um, the in-control touch systems that are shared commonly between the, uh, the model lines. Excellent. Anything from an app perspective, pre-cooling, pre-conditioning? Um, we do have the ability to remote start, so I'll leave it at that. Okay, all right. Well, we'll leave that for the future. Anyways, excellent car. We're going to keep following this, and uh, hopefully when it comes to market, we can reach out to LA, and maybe we can do a test drive, because that would be a heck of a lot of fun. Anyways, thanks for your time. Thanks very much. I appreciate it. All right, thanks. Enjoy the Enjoy. rest of the show. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Well, we're still here at the Canadian International uh, Auto Show in Toronto, and I'm here with Debbie. She's the Product Marketing Manager for D BMW Mini of Canada. Did I get all that right? Well, that's a, it's a mouthful, Pretty yes. close? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And we're here with something cool. We stumbled across the, the unveiling of the Mini Electric Concept. So we wanted to stop and ask you, Debbie, tell us what you can tell us about this car. It's Absolutely. Cool. I think, um, really, it, it kind of goes a little far back. We have a little bit of history with electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. And actually, back in 2008, we launched um, sort of a test vehicle, which was called the Mini E, right. and it was mm -hmm. in our three-door, the iconic hatch design, mm -hmm. um, but really we put in all kinds of electrification, mm -hmm. and it was actually um, a, a very good test vehicle that all of the sort of R&D and data coming out of the Mini E mm -hmm. since 2008 really helped develop a lot of the BMW i products. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this concept um, is really exciting to have on hand here uh, for Mini. Um, this concept is really slated for actual production as a fully electric electric mini okay. in November of 2019. Nice. And where do you uh, are you going to produce those? In we Europe? will be building these in Oxford okay. in England. England. So actually yeah. the, mm -hmm. the very original mini uh, factory oh, that wow, we still nice. build minis in today. So from a design perspective, we've had a quick walk around. It ba it does stand out. I mean, yes. it's definitely got, you know, the mini uh, DNA. There's no doubt about that. But what are some of the elements that you're very proud of that you've been able to uh, put into this? I think that you've really hit it on the head. And the mm -hmm. fact that it is truly the iconic mini as we know and love today mm -hmm. but it's really been modernized so yes. when you look at lighting and you look at um, aerodynamic properties things that have really taken the historical kind of classic mini mm -hmm. look that we know and love mm -hmm. but really to a modern and electrified version from a technical perspective, are there any types of specs that you can give out what you think the battery pack sizes might be or the range that you're trying to aiming for in, yeah, in I wish, what marketplace? I wish yeah. I had more secrets yeah. for you. <laughs> Unfortunately, with the yeah. launch of the uh, electric concept, there has been no specs okay. released. Mm -hmm. um, we're getting closer and closer to production time, so okay. we really expect to have um, specs in terms of range, battery size, pricing, availability, so on in, yep. in the coming months, but mm -hmm. unfortunately, it's still a teaser today. And is that late 2019? Is that a European market? Uh, initial delivery and then followed by uh, North America and other areas. Yeah, so correct? it's actually yeah. November 2019 yep. will be start of production. Yep. Um, and then once we can roll enough over yep. overseas, yep. we'll start to see it roll out in North America. So we'll probably see more of that in 2020, basically. I would which imagine is, so. Which is yeah. um, our viewers know that 2020 is a magic number that a lot of people are coming out with electrification. It is, so certainly. that's going to be a banner year. So we look forward to that. Great. Anything else you want to add about the car? I mean, you know, it uh, I looks think pretty it's cool. Just, yeah, I mean, a Mini really needs to be driven to be experienced. Driving is Leaving. I always say, go. don't take my word for it. Check out a Mini, and, and it's surprisingly bigger than its name might imply. Well, thank you very much. We'll definitely keep our eye on this and keep reporting on it. Thank Excellent. you for your time. Thank you. Take care. All right. Well, we're finally getting a bit of a break for our feet because we've been doing a lot of walking here at the auto show, and we found a really nice BMW i3 to sit in.
What do you think of this one? I like this car. <laughs> I, I know you it. like these I cars. Know. I know. They are nice. Definitely nice. Uh, what's your take on, on the show this year? What do you think? Well, I think the general consensus here is we're starting to see more electrification. Yeah. We're starting to see more and more of it. Now, in the next two to three years, we'll probably see even more coming out. But so far, it's encouraging. I mean, we just saw the I-Pace. Mm -hmm. And uh, we saw some stuff from Hyundai, of course, and of course now the Model 3 is here. It's getting lots of attention. Like We're a, only two years really away from 2020, <laughs> you know, where we keep talking the, the EV explosion will happen yeah. of cars. But you're absolutely right. I kind of get that sense. We, I've seen a lot more hybrids as well, especially plug-in hybrids. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't really cover a lot of that because there's so much out there. Uh, but there, there's that proliferation as well, which is good. A plug is a plug. You know, we, we do spur adoption of anything with a plug from that perspective. But it is nice to see. I, you know, I got a kick out of the Mini. I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. You know, it definitely is a mini uh we didn't show uh well you've got some uh, you showed some pictures of the rear lights and stuff so <laughs> some neat design but uh, i think what we're seeing is is manufacturers put a lot more thought into the design of the cars not just from a looks but from a functionality perspective they're giving more consideration to interior space usability all those features that people want uh, from a from a car yeah definitely seeing a trend towards um, more proper designed evs right. rather than just conversions or mm -hmm. adaptations anyhow oh, uh yeah. we're just going to call this one a day and yep. uh, we'll come back next year and report on some more things that are happening here at the uh, Ontario show in Toronto so uh, if you have a chance and you get to see this video if you're in the Toronto area or the Montreal area whatever make your way down if you want to see the Model 3 mm -hmm. because it's here all week so we'll leave it at that exactly anyways thanks for watching folks and don't forget to uh, like share and subscribe our video and check out our patreon page if you'd like to keep the videos coming we'd really appreciate all of our patreon supporters absolutely a big thank you for that and please keep sending us your emails our next show will be back to standard format we'll get to mailbag and all that stuff in the next show so please send us your emails at m3oc at uh, show at gmail.com on, on twitter yeah my handle is at model three owners i'm at kenneth bocor great and uh, we'll catch you on the next one thanks all right for watching, take guys. care peace out see you